Okay, today we're going to look at the normal curve and normal distribution using a normal table. Um, this is about the representation of data, lots and lots of numbers that you've collected as an experiment and where these numbers fall within a given standard deviation. If this is the mean, which it always is, and this particular graph is the normal graph, it is symmetrical about the mean. This is a useful piece of knowledge because half of my data is found here and half of my data is found here. And that's a, a fact you have to use to answer some of the questions. Now if I look at my standard mean and I go one standard deviation either side, I go one standard deviation either side, um, I, I start to generate numbers which tell me how much of my, my data is contained within that section. And on this particular one, 68.3% of all my data values would be found within plus one and minus one standard deviations, which you should know from previous lessons, is a measure of spread of data. And then if I extend this just a little bit further, and I go up to two standard deviations either side of the mean, I now find that 95.5% of my data is contained within that region. And again, extending it a little bit further out of three standard deviations, either side of the mean, I find that 99.7% of all my data, which is for most purposes, nearly all of your data, is contained within three standard deviations either side. So when we are to do these, we don't normally use the graph to answer these questions. We will usually use a table. And the only thing you've got to associate now is what we call a Z value, which is directly linked to standard deviation. My Z value here goes down this side and continues on this table down here. Sometimes they go beyond three. When it's required, it will be there. And we use these to find our Z value. So if I wanted to find a Z value of 0.65, I go down the left hand side to 0.6. I go out till I find 0.05, which would be 0.2422 is that particular Z value. Uh, the answer to the Z value, it's a probability of distribution. Now, when we are doing questions, we need to realise what we're trying to work out. Now with these, we're working with a Z value which goes along the standard deviation axis. This axis happens to be a frequency axis. And again, our main point is what are we trying to work out? So for different Z values, we extend our blue region here and we're trying to calculate the area under the curve which is a representation of the amount of data that's contained within that blue region. It doesn't include any of the external data at this moment in time. So when I pick a nice Z value, say, of 1, as near to 1 as I can get using this board, um, I'm going to get an answer of approximately 34%. So 34% of my data would be just in that block. There would be a matching... 34% in the block to the other side of the mean because of symmetry. So as I extend this further out towards about 2, we start to see the figures we saw on our earlier graph now. 47.72% and if I take that either side, it's 95% plus. Okay, so when we're working these out, we can obviously take this right to whatever value. Once we're getting up to a silly value, I just want to see if I can get it to say 49, 40. And what value does it tend to take to get to 50%? Just about 3.9. So at about 3.9 as a Z value, you've got half of your data within the range, which means all of it, really, because we're now looking at matching on this side. This would be the other half of the data. So 3.91 either side, and you've got all the data within. So let's try a few questions. 
for which we will use the table. So the first question is, uh, find the percentage of population between 0 to 0 0.5, and these are the Z values. Start at the row 0 0.4, so I'll just take that down for a few seconds. 0 0.4, 0 0.41, 0 0.42, 0 0.43, 0 0.44, 0 0.45, which is 0.1736. So the value we read straight from our table relates to the 0.45 and 0.1736, which equates to 17.36% of the population of results, the values. So 17.36% of the population are between 0 and 0 0.45, standard deviations from the mean. So let's try another question which asks us to look both sides of our mean. So I want a, a value between minus 1 and 2 this time. Now we, we apply the law of symmetry here and we don't need to find it at minus 1, we can just find it at 1. It's the same result. So again, if I go up to the top and just look at 1 for a second, it's 0 0.3413 and that's where this value has come from. So I found the answer between 0 and a value of z equals plus 1. That's 0 0.3413, which is this first blue region marked on the graph to the left of 0. Now, if I want to do anything up to 2, I do from 0 to 2. And again, I just take this down a little bit. And I get 0 0.4772. And that's the value stated in this particular example. So at the row for 2, the first column is 2.00. The value will be 0.4772, which is this blue region to the right of 0. So I'm now looking at two regions, and all I have to do is add them together to find the combined area and the combined percentage data set. So I add up my two answers, and I get 0.8185 which equates to 81.85%. So 81.85% of the population, which means the data, would be found between Z minus 1 and Z plus 2. And this is generally what we're trying to calculate. How much of the data should lie between two Z values? And we start to use this information to extend our knowledge of the data.